Hello and welcome back to Gaffey's Grinds. My name is Mr. Gaffey, a chemistry teacher here, and I am trying to take difficult concepts on leaving start chemistry and help you guys understand them and give you some practice questions to do. Um, a reminder, some tips for using these videos. Uh, your phone, if you're watching this on the phone, that's fine, but if you're not, you need to put it in a different room uh, or turn it off or just keep it away from you so it doesn't distract you while you're trying to learn. If you have any other tabs open, if you're on a computer or a tablet, you need to close them now. Again, these uh, tabs, notifications, just make it really easy for you to get distracted. Uh, that's gonna stop you from learning. And most importantly, uh, I'm gonna have lots of tasks, um, questions, activities for you to do. It's really, really important that you do them. If you do not do them, then you're not gonna learn as much or maybe even anything from these videos. So it's really, really important that you guys uh, do the practice that I ask you to do. In the last lesson, we uh, learned, I'll just uh, quick recap, this is video two in the organic chemistry uh, videos. So if you did not watch organic chemistry, the first video on uh, crude oil, uh, it's important that you go back and watch that one first, because it'll help this one to make more sense for you. But in the last video, we learned what a hydrocarbon is. So hydrocarbon. What is a hydrocarbon? I want you to speak your answer out loud now. Okay, I'm hoping that you said it's a substance or a compound made of hydrogen and carbon only. Hydrogen and carbon only. So compounds made of hydrogen and carbon only, we call them hydrocarbons. Uh, types of hydrocarbons, uh, we had two main families of hydrocarbons, so they can be we had two main groups of them. What were those two groups? Speak your answer now. I'm hoping that you said aromatic or aliphatic. Aromatic and aro aliphatic. Okay. Aromatic contain a special structure contain. What is that structure called? I hope you said benzene ring. And I want you to pause the video and on a rough piece of paper somewhere, I want you to sketch down what a benzene ring looks like. Do that now, please pause the video. Okay, so you should only be now watching this video if you have paused it and tried to draw a benzene ring. So they contain benzene ring. A benzene ring looks like this. So six sides, it's a hexagon with a circle in the middle and each point on the hexagon is a carbon atom. Okay, well done if you got that. Aliphatic, these are uh, compounds of hydrocarbons that do not contain benzene ring. Aliphatic hydrocarbons, uh, there are three main families. Speak out now, please tell to your screen, tell the three families of ali aliphatic hydrocarbons, please. I'm hoping that you said Alkanes, alkenes, and the last one. If you didn't, if you didn't get the first two, maybe that's prompted the last one. Say it now. Alkynes, alkenes, alkanes, and alkynes. The three families of aliphatic hydrocarbons. There are shapes that these can be. What main shapes do we have of aliphatic hydrocarbons? Speak the name now. Uh, speak those answers now, please. I'm hoping that you are saying. Straight, so one carbon after the other in a straight line. Branched, so maybe three in a line, uh, but one out to the side. Or uh, cyclic, which means uh, in, a, in a ring, cyclic, like a cycle, a, bisec a bicycle is bi means two, cycle means wheel, so uh, cyclic. So that would be carbons in a ring like that, but not benzene, not with this ring in the middle. Okay. Cyclic, branched and straight. Well done. If you got those right. Okay. Now oh, these car uh, the compounds which contain carbon and hydrogen are really, really important for chemistry study. 
Um, and basically the number, uh, the number of compounds that contain carbon and hydrogen, whose formulas uh, are known to chemists, is over 10 million. So there's over 10 million uh, compounds containing carbon and hydrogen. Sometimes they'll contain other uh, atoms too, not just carbon and hydrogen, but then they are not called hydrocarbons. But there are 10 million molecules that contain carbons and hydrogens. And this is far more than the number of compounds from all of the other elements combined. So you can take all the other elements on the periodic table, uh, take the compounds that they form, combine the total number, and it's still less than the ones uh, containing carbon and hydrogen. Um, carbon and hydrogen are found in living things. Living things. And when we looked at formation of crude oil, we know that the crude oil, which is made of hydrocarbons, comes from living things. So where are these carbon and hydrogens in living things? Well, all three of what we call the macromolecules, macro means big, so big molecules that make up living things, the carbohydrates, we've heard of that before, carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins. So living things are made of carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins. These are macromolecules, big molecules that make up living things. Well, all three of these things, contain carbon so they all contain carbon and they all contain hydrogen as well but they all contain carbon now because of this the study of carbon containing molecules has been given the name organic chemistry organic now the word organic means living so you can see where that word came from. Organic came from the word living because originally organic chemistry was the study of the chemistry of living things. But because the chemistry of living things, all these macromolecules contain carbon, now we understand that organic chemistry is not just the study of living things, but the study of compounds containing carbon. So compounds containing carbon. So uh, organic chemistry, one more time, is a study of compounds which contain carbon. So just a couple of quick questions now, just to recap. Living things contain, uh, are made up of three main macromolecules. Uh, speak the names of the three macromolecules now, please. Okay, I'm hoping you said carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins. Carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins all contain atoms of a particular element. What element is that? Speak the name now, please. I'm hoping you said carbon. And because all living things contain uh, carbon, there's a special word that describes the study of these molecules. What is that word, please? I'm hoping you said the word is organic, which means living. And the modern definition then of what organic is, is it's the study of compounds which contain carbon okay so we can clarify that underneath organic chemistry is the study of compounds containing carbon Okay, I'd like you to pause the video now, okay? And uh, in your notes copy, I want you to try and recreate this diagram and also the definition from memory. So I want you to now pause the video and try and complete that from memory. Okay, you should only be watching the video now if you've paused it and you tried to draw that diagram from memory and also to write down the definition for organic chemistry. This is what you should have. So pause the video now and add anything you didn't have or uh, fix up the definition. Hopefully you had it correct, but you, uh, you may have made some small errors or left some small things out. So uh, pause the video and fix it now. Okay, so you should only be watching the video now if you, have, um, if you have made the corrections and yours should look exactly like mine does. Okay. Now, uh, next question is why carbon? What unique properties does carbon have which allow it to form this enormous number of compounds? So in reality, you know many of these properties already, uh, properties and features that carbon has from our previous studies. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to give you some revision questions that have come from other topics that we've already covered that relate to carbon because they're important to just revise our memory 
of the different features of carbon in order uh, for us to better understand why carbon forms so many compounds. Okay, so these are going to be the practice questions. Now, some of this stuff you won't have studied for quite a while, so, um, but it is, of course, important that we remember stuff from a long time ago. Um, it is a fundamental, a lot of these are fundamental basics of chemistry. So uh, what I'm going to get you guys to do is I'm going to get you to pause the video and try to do as many of these questions as you can. Okay, so try as many of them as you can. If you uh, really can't remember, skip and move on to the next one. We will do a review, but it's really important that you try really hard to remember these. It's even worth pausing the video and going back, looking perhaps through your notes uh, from previous topics to really try and recap these for yourselves. Okay, so pause the video now and tr attempt these questions. Okay, now you should only be listening to me if you have paused the video and you have uh, really tried uh, your best to do those questions. We're going to go through some of those questions now, or we're going to go through all of those questions together. Um, now, some of these are quite detailed, so I'm going to have to uh, model the answers for you under the visualizer here. Um, first of all, uh, I'm hoping you guys can see. Um, just see if I can make this a bit bigger. Okay. Now, I'm hoping that that's going to be big enough for you guys to see. Uh, so how many electrons are in a, an atom of carbon? Okay, so the first thing is, well, how do we work out the number of electrons? Well, we know that atoms are neutrally charged. That means the number of electrons and the number of protons are the same. So we get the number of protons by getting the uh, carbon's atomic number. So the atomic number of carbon number equals six. Okay, so that means... Therefore, there are six protons, because the atomic number tells us the number of protons. And if there are six protons, then there have to be six electrons. So the answer to number one here is there are six electrons. OK, well done if you got that right. Number two, draw a Bohr atom of carbon. OK, so to draw a simple model of an, uh, an atom of carbon. So in the nucleus, so we have carbon and the nucleus is in the center. So that's where the C is. And then we're drawing the electrons. I'm gonna draw them X's. So we know that we've got two electrons in the first shell or the first energy level. And then there are six all together. So there will be four electrons in the second shell, four electrons in the second shell. So that's the answer to question two. Okay. Um, question three, write the SPD, electronic configuration of carbon. Okay, so number three. So the SPD, electronic configuration. So um, we know carbon, C has six electrons. Just remind yourself, we've already done that six electrons. Now I have to fill it up. So the first energy level is the 1s energy level, 1s, and it has to be filled before any can go in the 2s. That's one of our rules. So it will be 1s2. It can hold a maximum of two electrons. Okay, the next energy level is 2s2. Okay, so the set 2s uh, energy level is next and it can hold a maximum of two. So that's four electrons done so far. And the next sublevel is the 2p sublevel. Now the 2p sublevel can hold a maximum of six. I'm not gonna have six more electrons here because I've only got six all together and I've already used four. So there are two left. So this is going to be 2p2. Okay, well done. If you got that right, uh, so 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Okay, next one. How many valence electrons does carbon have? Okay, so valence electrons are the ones in the outer energy level. So again, uh, from our drawing of the carbon atom, I'll just quickly draw it again. We had two in the first shell and we had one, two, three, four in the second shell. So the valence shell is the outer shell. It's the one, the electrons that will be involved in bonding. Okay, and there are four electrons in the valence shell. So four valence electrons. Well done, if you got that right, four valence electrons. 
Question five, carbon is a non-metal. What type of bonding uh, will carbon be involved in? Okay, well, bonding. Just as a quick recap, bonding can be either ionic or covalent. Bonding can be ionic or covalent. Ionic happens between a metal and a non-metal atom. Covalent happens between two non-metal elements. Okay, so carbon is a non-metal. What type of bonding will it, in, uh, will it be involved in? Carbon, when, especially when it's bonded to itself or to another non-metal, is always involved in covalent bonding. So that's the answer to question five. Carbon is a non-metal. What type of bonding will it be involved in? It will be involved in covalent bonding. Okay, especially when you've got two carbons combined together, covalent bonding. What is the maximum number of bonds that carbon can form? Well, we know that, uh, so that's number five, this is number six. The maximum number of bonds that carbon can form, uh, we've got carbon, and we know that it's the outer electrons involved in bonding, and there are four outer electrons we wrote already. So each of those can be involved in a bond. It can form a bond which we draw with a line to another atom. Okay, so each of those could form a bond with another atom. So a bond or this line just represents a shared pair of electrons between two atoms. So another example here would be a hydrogen. A hydrogen contributes one electron to the bond and the carbon contributes one electron to the bond. So because there's four valence electrons, the maximum amount of bonds that carbon can form is four. And this is this is basically the reason why you can form so many compounds from carbon because it can make four bonds. Okay. Um, what type of structures will carbon form when it bonds? Okay. This was quite difficult. This was a tough one. So seven, what type of uh, structures will carbon form when it uh, bonds? Well, because it's covalent, it will form either simple molecular structures, So molecules, in other words, it will form molecules, covalent molecules like carbon dioxide is a simple covalent molecule. Or it could also form giant covalent structures, giant covalent. So these are massive structures and things like if I represent a carbon atom with a dot here. So things like diamond are made of many carbon atoms joined together in like a giant structure. Okay, so giant covalent structures. It's loads of carbon atoms joined together covalently. Okay, so they are giant covalent. Usually we're talking about these ones, simple molecular structures. It can also form giant covalent. Okay, so the two types. Well done if you got that right. That was difficult. For most of uh, for organic chemistry, we're going to be talking about these simple molecular structures. Okay, so just molecules of carbon, covalent molecules. Of course, the opposite or the other alternative would be ionic structures. So ion, ionic crystals. So if it's ionic bonding, which this is not, carbon does not do ionic bonding, then we would have ionic crystal structures or giant ionic lattices but that is not what we're talking about here. So we're talking about molecules. Question eight, draw a dot and cross diagram for CH4. So we would have done this during bonding. So this is question eight, dots and crosses. So carbon has four valence electrons. So we draw the four crosses and it's gonna be covalently bonded to four hydrogens, to four hydrogens, okay? So we show this covalent with a line. That's a covalent bond, that's one hydrogen. Uh, sorry, uh, it's, there's the second hydrogen, there's the third hydrogen, and there's the fourth hydrogen, okay, so this is CH4, that is a dot and cross diagram to show the CH4 molecule.
Well done if you got that right. Uh, dot and cross of a uh, covalent substance. State the molecular shape and angle for CH4. State the molecular shape and angle for CH4. Okay, so we would have studied this uh, back in the chapter or the topic on bonding. So we want to know this, uh, the shape, the name of this type of shape and the bond angle. Well, this is a, a central atom with four bond pairs around it. So it's covalently bonded to four different atoms. So that gives us uh, the structure of what we call a tetra, which means four tetrahedral. Tetrahedral. And the bond angle is 109.5 degrees, 109.5 degrees, tetrahedral, that's this shape here. Tetra meaning four, because there are four separate covalent bonds, tetrahedral shape. Explain your choice for the shape and angle for CH4. Okay, well, we're choosing a tetrahedral because we've got a central atom covalently bonded to four uh, other atoms. And we know that tetrahedrals always have a shape of 109. 5 degrees. So in other words, that is the angle between any of these bonds. Okay, so these bonds have an angle of 109.5. Organic chemistry is the study of specific organic, uh, specific compounds found in living things. Define organic chemistry. So we discussed this earlier in the video. Organic chemistry is the study of compounds containing carbon. Okay, so well done if you got all of those correct. Um, if you did not and you don't remember any of that stuff or you're not sure, you need to go back to the chapter on bonding uh, and, um, and just quickly revise, uh, look over them questions. Okay, a reminder then that we've been talking about crude oil. And crude oil is a mixture of hydrocarbons. We learned about three families of aliphatic hydrocarbons. They were alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Most of the crude oil is made up of alkanes. Okay, now the different hydrocarbons that are in this crude oil, so it's a mixture of different hydrocarbons. Well, the different hydrocarbons, how are they different from each other? Well, they're basically different lengths. So these squiggly lines are gonna represent the length of the molecule. So that there would be a longer hydrocarbon, longer hydrocarbon. It's got many, hydro, got many carbons in the chain. And most of the crude oil is long hydrocarbons like this. We can have ones which are slightly shorter, and then we have ones which are very short. Okay. So different length hydrocarbons. So these ones, shorter molecules. And the longer ones are longer molecules. Okay, but the key thing about hydrocarbons is that they are compounds containing hydrogen and carbon only. Okay, I'm gonna draw three compounds now in a second. And I, what I want you to do is I want you to study them closely and I want you to tell me which ones are hydrocarbons and which ones are not hydrocarbons. So this is number, this is A. This is B. And this is C. That's A, B, and C. Okay, I want you to speak. Tell the screen now uh, which ones are hydrocarbons and which ones are not. Okay, I'm hoping that you said that A is a hydrocarbon. I'm hoping you said B is not a hydrocarbon. And I'm hoping that you said C is not a hydrocarbon. So only A is a hydrocarbon. Why is A the only one that's a hydrocarbon? Well, A has two atoms of carbon and six atoms of hydrogen, nothing else, only carbon and hydrogen. So it is a hydrocarbon. B has two atoms of carbon, one, two, three, four, five atoms of hydrogen, but it's got this atom of chlorine bonded to it. So this one is not a hydrocarbon because it contains carbon and hydrogen, but it also has chlorine. So many molecules uh, exist in the world that have other molecules like this bonded to it. And we will study those in organic chemistry, 
but they are not called hydrocarbons. Again, another one, the last one here, has two atoms of carbon. Two atoms of carbon here, one, two, and it has one, two, three, four atoms of hydrogen, but it also has this one atom of oxygen here. So it cannot be a hydrocarbon. Again, we will study this. It is important in organic chemistry because remember, organic chemistry is the study of what compound or what element. It's the, I hope you said it's the study of elements containing carbon. So this is, a, a, sorry, so, a compounds containing carbon. This is a compound containing carbon, but it's not a hydrocarbon because it does not just contain carbon and, hyd and hydrogen. It has an oxygen as well. So this is not a hydrocarbon. So well done if you got that right. Now, I already told you that most of the compounds in crude oil are, belong to the family called alkanes. Now, I'm going to draw some alkanes for you here. I'm going to draw the very first alkane. It's called methane. It is the smallest hydrocarbon, methane. It's got the molecular formula of CH4, and it's got a uh, displayed formula of C with four H's around it like this. We said it's the smallest hydrocarbon, the smallest alkane, called methane. The second one is called ethane. And we will look at how these are named afterwards, but for now, stick with me. C2H6 is the molecular formula. And we draw this like this, two carbons joined together and six hydrogens joined together, joined to the, uh, to the carbons like that. Okay. Now, the third one is called propane. It's got the formula C3H8, so three carbons this time. So one, two, three, like that, three carbons in a chain, and it's surrounded by hydrogens. Like that, okay. Now, hopefully you can see that for this type of substance, the alkanes, all the carbons are singly bonded to four atoms, singly bonded. There's no sign of a double bond or a triple bond. They're all single lines, okay? So all the carbons, if we've got a carbon joined to another carbon, it's always by a single bond. So here, for example, here and here, all single bonds, okay? We call this, the functional group. Functional group. And the functional group, the group refers to an atom or group of atoms. The functional part refers to give molecules its function, give a molecule its function slash or its properties slash how it reacts, reactions. Okay, so the functional group of alkanes is that they have all single bonds around the carbons, carbon to carbon, single bonds, okay? Now, other functional groups, just to give you uh, an idea of other functional groups. So the first one is we have carbon to carbon, all single bonds. That's the anatom with this is called an alkane, okay? We can also have carbons doubly bonded to carbon. So any molecule which has a carbon doubly bonded to carbon has a different functional group than the alkanes. These get a different name. They're not called alkanes. We also have, for example, carbon, any time a carbon is bonded to a chlorine, that is a different type of functional group. It's called a chloroalkane. Now these are, these three things are different functional groups. Okay, I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna ask you, can you draw for me this one, the next one? I'll tell you what the name is. It's called butane. 
and its formula is C4H10. Okay, see if you can draw that for me now. So pause the video. Okay, you should only be watching this now if you have tried to draw this. So hopefully using this one, you will see that it should be C. You should have four C's in a row. And again, each one should each carbon should have four bonds. So three hydrogens here, two in the middle, one, two in the middle, one, and three on the end here. Like that. Okay, don't worry if you didn't get that right, because we are going to be practicing drawing that later. Now, up here, any group, okay, any group of compounds like the, this group of four here, and there are more, but any group of these that have the same functional group. So if we have compounds with the same functional group, these are called a homologous, homologous series series because they follow one after the other just like a series of t in a, a tv show they follow one after the other and homo logus homo I'll break it up homo means one and logus means kind of same so a series in which they're one and the same okay so that's the best way i can explain it and what are the features of a homologous series well they have the same functional group Same functional group. For example, all of the alkanes here have all carbon to carbon single bonds, single bonds here, C to C, we show it like this, all C to C single bonds. They differ by a CH2 unit. In other words, when you move from one to the next, from the smallest one to the next smallest one, you add a CH2, okay? Now that's quite hard to see using the first and second example, but if we use the second and third example, I'll just have to draw these out again very quickly. Sorry, because I've drawn them boxes. Apologies for that. If we look at the second and third members of the alkanes, hopefully you can see that to go from this one to this one, we had to add in the CH2. So to go from here, two carbons and six hydrogens. If we left out this middle bit, the CH2, that would be two carbons and six hydrogens. So we've added a CH2 in the middle. To go to the next one, so between this and this one, we've added another CH2 in. So this time we've got two CH2s in the middle. So hopefully you can predict the next one should have another CH2 in the middle and so on. And as they get bigger, you add in a CH2 unit each time. Now, because they have the same functional group, all carbon to carbon single bonds, they will have the similar properties. So similar melting points, similar boiling points, similar properties. And they will undergo the same types of reactions same reactions they react in a predictable way because they've got the same functional group and the functional group is what makes it do certain reactions and they also are prepared if you want to make them you make them in a similar way similar preparation method okay now there's a lot in that okay the really important things to take from this is functional group and homologous series we need to be able to explain what those are what is a functional group have example there uh, c single bond c and any of the any molecules with c single bond c are called alkanes and these are four examples molecules with different functional groups like this one and this one will not be called alkanes they'll have a different name okay and we will meet those but for now we're just welcome with alkanes an homologous series is any group of chemicals family of chemicals that all have the same functional group they differ by a CH2 unit, they have similar properties, same reactions, similar method of preparation. So what I'm gonna get you guys to do is pause the video and take this down somewhere in your notes, okay? Take this down somewhere in your notes. So pause the video, take that down. 
Okay, so now you should only watch in the video if you have paused and you have taken down the points from that slide. Okay, um, so it's now time to do some practice on these questions. So I'm going to get up the questions now. Give me one second. Okay, these are the practice questions. So what I'm gonna get you to do now is I want you to pause the video and from memory, so you shouldn't be looking at the notes that you just took down. So from memory now, it's really important that you try to do this from memory, see if you can recall the information, okay, or retrieve the information. So pause the video and try these questions in your practice copy now for me, please. Okay, and again, you should only be watching this video now if you have tried the questions. Okay, so we're going to go through the answers now. Um, so in your red pen, you're going to correct for me. Okay, so the first question, which of the following molecules is or are hydrocarbons? So hopefully you said A and C. Okay, A and C are hydrocarbons. And how do you know? Uh, you, is the next question, how do you know? Well, compounds A and C contain only hydrogen and carbon. Compound B also contains oxygen, so it is not hydrocarbon. Question 40, each of the above compounds is defined as a hydrocarbon. Define hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbons are compounds which contain uh, hydrogen and carbon only. Well done, if you got that definition correct. That's an important one for uh, your exam. The next one, 15, a student says that compounds C2H2 and compounds C2H4 belong to the same homologous series. Explain why the student is wrong. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw out the explanation for this. Okay, so if I was to draw these two out, um, I would see that the first, uh, the first molecule, the C2H2, if I was to draw that, is two carbons. And if there's only two carbons connected, oh, sorry, two carbons connected to the, uh, to the carbons, two hydrogens connected to the carbons, apologies, then, it would look something like this, so C2H2. Now, each carbon we know has to form four bonds. It's got four valence electrons. Now, if it's only, um, if it's only connected by, uh, to one carbon or to one hydrogen, then each of the carbons have to be connected to the other carbon with three bonds like that, okay? Now, the other hydrocarbon there was C2, the, sorry, this is C2H2, okay? Uh, the other hydrocarbon there was C2H4, like this, C2H4. So we draw that like this. Each carbon then has to be connected to two, like that. And each carbon has to have four bonds, so they've only got two at the moment, so they must have two between them like that. So the first reason why these are not part of the same, of a Malaga series is they have a different functional group. Now, you might not have been able to draw them, so... If you couldn't draw them, you might not have been able to know that they were the same functional group. But what you should have been able to see is that they, if we have C2H2 and C2H4, well, we know members of a homologous series have to differ by a CH2 unit. And these do not differ by a CH2 unit. They've got the same number of carbons. They've got a different number of hydrogens. So this one is two more than that one. This one has two more hydrogens than that one, but it doesn't have an extra carbon. So we haven't actually changed, um, we haven't actually changed the number of carbon. We haven't differed by a CH2 unit. So no CH2 unit. So it cannot be a homologous series. That question was difficult. So if you weren't able to answer it, don't worry. If you were able to answer, work really well done. So it doesn't differ by a CH2 unit. So it can't be the same homologous series. Um, question 16 says, ethanol has the formula C2H5OH. A student refers to ethanol as a hydrocarbon. Explain why this is correct, uh, incorrect, sorry. Uh, well, this is incorrect because ethanol has an oxygen atom in it, so it cannot be considered a hydrocarbon. Well done, if you got that correct. And the last one, compounds with the same functional group are classified into groups called homologous series to make them easy to study. What is a functional group? What is a functional group? So a functional group is an atom or a group of atoms which uh, give um, a molecule its uh, characteristic properties and reactions. Okay, so just recap that one more time. A functional group is an atom 
or group of atoms. So that's where the group part comes from in functional group. And functional basically means it gives the molecules their properties, their characteristic properties, and the reactions that they do. Okay, so that's what we mean by a functional group. Okay, uh, I'll just stick up the answers here so you can see them written down. Okay, so anything that you didn't get correct, um, you can correct them now, stick them in a red pen so when you're revising, you'll know the answers to these. These questions all come from the booklet that I'm giving uh, you out on organic chemistry um, oh, and the organic chemistry one booklet. So again, we should be keeping the numbers the same as they are in the booklet. Okay, well done. You finished a video two now and I'll see you in the next one.